free weights versus machines. The machines, their big advantage is they can isolate a specific muscle or muscle group in a way that oftentimes doesn't involve a lot of the others. It doesn't fatigue you a ton. It doesn't hurt your joints. And then that isolation is what allows you to increase the strength or size of that specific muscle. And that plugs back in to your overall plan. So for example, if you, let's say, are in a situation where you're working on increasing your pull-up abilities, be it for repetitions or for strength, and you have a situation where you know that your lats and your pulling muscles in your back can take more, they can for sure take more, and they'll benefit from more. But you also know that your elbows are giving you some problems, and you just, you can't, this motion, it just, if you could somehow train your back and still, but not really use your elbows, that would be great. Well, what can you do that without, you know, a machine? Like, you know, it's, it's limited. It's tough. All right. Get a cable machine and do lat prayers. You can keep your elbows completely straight or just not involved. You don't have to bend it under load. And your lats get torched up. And all of a sudden, they get bigger. They get stronger. You get back into doing more pull-ups when your elbows heal. And all of a sudden, you're like, holy shit, I'm the best I've ever been at this because I found a way to specifically target the lats. And it's, it's definitely good to do tons of pull-ups, but maybe as many pull-ups as you could do is limited by your elbow, but your lats could still use the work. So you do as many pull-ups as you can in your training until your elbows feel a little weird. Then you go over to the cable station and you do lat prayers until your lats feel a little weird. Then you're done for the day or for the week or whatever. And that gives each part of your body more of what you need. Here's another one. If you have uh, stronger biceps, can you do more pull-ups? Well, yeah, hell yeah, you can. Look, how are you supposed to get your strongest biceps if all you have is a pull-up bar? What's to stop you from picking up a curl bar or uh, doing a curl machine or a cable curl and hitting up just your biceps? In a low fatigue state, you get them shits bigger, and then all of a sudden, it all comes together and you're training every part of your body exactly like you need. That's really a big advantage of machines is like, if, body, if our bodybuilders sort of discovered this, could they get big legs with squats? Yes. But at some point, squats are limited by your lower back strength and your glutes and your recovery. It's just your spine's doing this and you're like, ah, shit. Is there a way for me to train my legs without using my back? Well, the leg press. And you're like, holy crap, this is great. That doesn't mean squats are bad. So when we say machines are good. That doesn't mean it. Stop free weights. Stop your calisthenics moves. Only machines. No way. We want to do as much calisthenics as possible. As much free weights if we have to train with weights as possible because the transfer of training from free weights that you have to move with your own body is better to calisthenics than as machines. But if there's a good reason to use machines, specifically to isolate a particular muscle that could use more work in a way that doesn't really make the rest of your body tired or leaves alone potentially slightly hurt parts of you, then that's the right answer. And that's where machines are great. And again, the philosophy is I'll do anything it takes to get better at calisthenics. And if that means I have to go do machines and that means my calisthenics buddies see me doing it and they laugh at me, hey, I'm laughing too. I know this looks lame, fellas. Fuck these machines. Am I right? But then you finish your curls. And then the next competition, the next time you're at the park together showing off, you just dunk on all of them and they're like, oh shit, what are you doing over there? Are you taking steroids? And you're like, no, motherfucker, I'm in the gym. God damn it. There's this place called gym where they have these things that can stimulate your muscles. They're called machines and weights. You know, so that's what we do here. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, if there's not a sport anymore, there's no modern sport that doesn't utilize weight rooms and machines. Can you imagine coming up to a hockey player or an Aussie rules football player and be like, why are you in the weight room? You're supposed to be playing Aussie rules football. Like you're supposed to be on the pitch. And he's like, what are you, stupid or something? I'm in here to train my hamstrings so they don't get hurt out on the field. Get out of here. So a calisthenics athlete, the playground, the calisthenics equipment, that's your arena of showing off. And it's a great place to train. But there are other places to train supplementary training. There's the weight room, etc. cetera. And, uh, you know, that's where really good stuff happens. A great example I can give here for people to actually apply when they're doing the calisthenics stuff is with the strength component of, say, trying to improve your way to pull up, you're primarily going to improve that by doing weighted pull-ups. Sweet. If you're doing that with a strength rep dosage, go for it. Do that at the start of your session. But then after you've done that, just say, okay, I've got what I needed out of this as according to my plan, but I want to exhaust my back muscles. What the average calisthenics person would do would be to take the weight off, maybe do some type of reduced load drop set for moderate rep ranges so they can stimulate in a more efficient way for hypertrophy 
but that's probably not the best approach because with a pull-up, you've got a lot of coordination, technique. There's so much instability with the swinging. If you just did a lat pull-down, so much more superior as an exercise to come afterwards because you've got the stability of the machine. And then you can actually exhaust the muscles properly as opposed to being tired from just trying to coordinate your body with a pull-up. So that's one example that the calisthenics people can take as an upper body approach. And from a longevity and injury prevention standpoint, just say you started noticing that you're having issues with your elbows, like tendon related stuff. And all you ever do is compound movements. You're doing tons of pull-ups, tons of rows. Chances are there might be some missing pieces in your elbow. So like the muscles surrounding that, maybe you never fully exhaust your biceps. Maybe you never fully exhaust your triceps. So adding in isolation towards the middle to latter part of your session is going to fill in those gaps in your body and potentially improve performance, potentially improve longevity. So there's there's value in using weights and machines in particular, um, as your example there, of being able to have stability to genuinely train muscles to failure. Brilliantly put. You know, you, you want to make everything that you can as simple as it as it can be, but no simpler. And I think some folks in calisthenics are stuck in the, you know, I'm just going to use body weight. And it's almost like a religion. It's like, so do you actually want to get good at calisthenics or do you want to just only do it with using just the calisthenic implements? There's the same thing in weightlifting as the same thing in, 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 by, in, in uh, powerlifting where they're like, yep, just train the big three, squat bench and deadlift. You're like, why? Why? That you could get better doing supplementary things. And no one's saying the supplementary things are better than the core stuff. You do the core stuff as much as you can, but there may be other smarter ways of adding things in, taking things out that on the net balance just make you better at stuff. And is it, the question at the end of the day is always the same. Do you want to get as good as you can? And if you have to get as good as you can, you're going to do some stuff that is going to end up making you look more like a bodybuilder. You're like, if calisthenics athletes take their, their shit seriously, all of a sudden they start following good nutritional principles. And like, you know, your friends will make fun of you because they're like, what are you doing? Like, there's always that calisthenic guy that eats like maccas every day and he's got abs and he's great. And, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, why am I doing good nutrition? Because if that guy with his genetics did great nutrition, he'd be going to like world exhibitions on calisthenics, but he's just really good locally because he doesn't want to take that next step. So it's all about deciding if you're a, you know, not if you're a serious athlete or if you're just a recreational person, but understanding there's a spectrum of how advanced you want to make your training, how intricate, how intricate you want to make your diet. And if you are unsatisfied with being very recreational, how can you formalize your training? You first you do free weights, then later you do some machines, then later you do advanced periodization, then later you get you actually hire a coach to help you because you know somebody like you coach in in calisthenics. How many people get coached in calisthenics? Most people in calisthenics are just like go in the playground, do stuff with my friends. I maybe watch a Hannibal for King YouTube video, and that's about. <laughs> I'm impressed, Mike. I like that. That's great. <laughs> So, right. And like, you know, uh, cause you know, if that, that's the perfect example of like, yeah, well, he just got that Jack being in playgrounds. It's like, yeah, but you don't look like that idiot. And if you want to be as, as jacked as Hannibal for King, you may have to do other things. And who even knows? Maybe he goes to the weight room in a spare time. The camera's only on when he's in the playground. Who knows what he does Ooh. in his off hours, right? Ooh, oh, conspiracy. Cool. Mike's throwing because it's there. always that. If you enjoyed that, click here for the full fitness FAQs video. Peace.